the potential to reduce carbon emissions as well as to have a positive social impact in the cities. Uh, in this challenge, uh, we are also inviting uh, innovators, technologists, business and investors to develop, test and scale cutting edge solutions that can contribute to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions at the local level. Uh, each of the city has produced a challenge brief with more details about the city, its emissions and other information that is relevant for innovators to present proposals that can address uh, each of the challenges. And they are also available at the website. Um, so the innovators in the Climate Smart Cities Challenge, they will be selected to, and they will have the, also the opportunity to collaborate with the city and investors to demonstrate the proposed solutions in real life environments. Um, the idea behind the demonstration is to really capture the learnings and for future investments and also to understand how best we can foster innovation in cities. So we have uh, we'll have also the early submissions deadline in December and the final submission deadline in January, third uh, of January. And uh, we can move this slide, please. Thank you. So the challenge um, implementation is led by UN Habitat in Viable Cities, which is the strategic Swedish innovation program uh, for climate neutral and sustainable cities in Sweden. And we also collaborate with the cities as the main partners. Uh, the challenge is also supported by a other range of Swedish partners and also Nesta Challenge, who is organizing the webinar today as well. Uh, next slide, please. So for the challenges of each of the cities, we have uh, Bogota, which is to improve freight mobility and reduce congestion-based greenhouse gas emissions and air pollutants. Uh, we have Bristol, which is to contribute to a new model of uh, to deliver affordable zero carbon homes. We will have also Curitiba to advance new solutions for creating zero carbon neighborhoods. And also Makindi Sabagavo in Uganda, which is uh, to propose scalable ways to develop zero carbon energy efficient and affordable homes. So these are the challenges of each of the cities. Uh, today we will focus on the one for Bogota, and we will hear more about the competition now as well. Great, thank you, Livia. I'm happy to kind of give a little bit of an overview of the competition um, and then pass over to the city. Uh, so this is just to kind of give you an oversight of what the challenge entails. So there's kind of five key phases to this challenge. Um, we had an initial open call for cities last year, which is how we've kind of ended up with these uh, four brilliant cities um, and their challenges. Um, so now we are in the kind of competition entry stage. So we're looking to invite innovators um, and we'll go into a little bit more detail um, about what we mean by innovators, but kind of businesses, organizations, SMEs, et cetera, to apply and specifically kind of apply to help kind of solve the challenges that the cities have put forward. Um, following this, as Livia mentioned, the final entry deadline to be part of the kind of competition is the 5th of January on, in 2022. We will then announce 80 finalists, so kind of 80 organisations, businesses will be announced on the 20th of January at the Dubai Expo. Um, they will then move into the kind of co-creation phase, um, and this is a chance for the kind of the organisations participating to really work closely with the cities, work with the partners behind the challenge and further develop that initial proposal that they put forward. Following this, we'll move into the system demonstration planning phase. So really trying to bring those solutions to life, um, including um, in further investment as well and so on. And then in 2022 and 23, we'll actually move into system demonstration and hopefully kind of demonstrating the solutions that have been developed um, in the cities themselves. That's just a really high level kind of overview of what the challenge should entail over the next kind of couple of years. We could move to the next slide, please. So an important, I guess, question is why enter? Hopefully it already sounds quite exciting to you all, um, but I think it's important to highlight that up to kind of 80 finalists, so 20 per city, the finalists could be, as I said, kind of a, a business, an organization, um, an SME, um, will be kind of selected. 
Uh, so that's quite a high probability of being selected. Um, so we really would encourage to put forward a proposal. Um, and I think also the co-creation period with the cities um, is a very exciting opportunity. There'll be kind of mentoring and business development support. So really help kind of build on the initial proposal, particularly working um, to kind of bring people together, form collaborations and work with kind of partners. The cities have also themselves kind of designed a really bespoke and really fantastic array of support for kind of innovators and really willing to work with them. Um, and they'll kind of explain a little bit more about what that might mean for Bogota, but it could be kind of access to data, access to kind of test beds and so on, stakeholders. And also there'll be kind of matchmaking support to form teams. A key theme of this, uh, I guess, competition and challenge is collaboration um, and really wanting to kind of help organizations and kind of communities build partnerships. Once kind of the 80 finalists have had that co-creation period with the city, they will then obviously have worked to kind of build on their initial proposals. And out of that kind of 80 finalists, four winning teams will be selected. So one team per city. And that team could be kind of made up of a couple of different finalists, organizations, um, and they'll be kind of invited to progress to the next stage. And at this point, the kind of the teams will be sharing up to 400,000 euros to kind of plan their demonstrations. And as mentioned, then they'll move into kind of into that actual system demonstration phase as well in 2023. So hopefully that all sounds exciting to you all and, and looking forward to your questions a bit later on in the Q&A. But for now, I will pass over to Ricardo and Francisco to talk through in a little bit more detail about the specific challenge that they have. So over to you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Anna. So welcome everyone. Thank you all for joining us. So in Bogota, we have a big, big challenge in terms of mobility. And one of them, uh, and one that that is essential so that we all can live well in the future in the city is freight transport or logistics. So we have around 70,000 uh, trips per day in the city. Most of them are made in trucks that use diesel or, or, or gasoline fuel. Uh, most of them, are uh, owned by small vehicle owners or small fleet owners that have one and two trucks. A small percentage is, is owned by, by big companies. So it's quite hard to, to, to improve or to be more, to be really efficient. So you have around 40% around of all the trips that are empty around the city. And so the challenge is how do you balance freight delivery and also uh, gas emissions, uh, air quality and greenhouse emission as well. So the call to action that we are uh, looking for is for innovative business models, services and our technologies that contribute to improve this freight mobility in the city. And at the same time, reduce congestion based greenhouse gas and air pollutants from logistics operations. So you can move to the next slide, buddy. Thank you. So we have around 70,000 70, trucks that move in the city in a working day. Um, half of them, half of those trips uh, are made within the city. 40% uh, of them are, are empty travels or empty trips. Um, you have almost 42% uh, that have a region and destination outside the city. And you have two main uh, freight carriers that uh, provide or that uh, work to the city. It is Calle 13 in the south part of the city and Calle 80 um, that uh, is more a central corridor that, that uh, gets the, the, the big trucks into small or cross docking points that are in the border of the city. The peak hours are after uh, uh, the normal peak hours of the city that is from seven, from 10 uh, 45 a.m. until almost noon. Um, they, they represent almost half of the, of the vehicles that deliver uh, freight. And why is it? Because freight has uh, uh, restrictions uh, on peak hours in the morning and in the afternoon so that uh, public transportation and uh, people can get to their works, to their uh, universities. And so they have to circulate in other uh, uh, timetables. And that's what we want to improve this. We are working side by side with the mobility, with the Secretary of Mobility. Um, I'm working with uh, the Environmental Secretary so that we can have like a whole restriction 
uh, for vehicles that are uh, that pollute more and almost none or none uh, or zero restrictions for the ones that are zero emissions or low emissions you can move to the next slide please so these freight transportation are very are made of very very old vehicles uh, almost half of them are pre-euro which is like a, a diesel fuel that is very very pollutant um, and the rest of them are from Euro 2, Euro 3, and some of them are more recent uh, and don't pollute that much. The age is also very high from around 20 years, from 15 to 20 years of age. So you have two, two challenges here, how to work with not only vehicles that are very old, but also with, freight, with truck drivers and vehicle owners that have uh, uh, many, many other challenges to work in the city. They are used to other uh, practices. So that's one of the things that we, want, we also want to solve. And the types are made of uh, small vehicles with two axes, um, because most of the big ones are restricted or, or, or have limitations to, to enter and circulate in the city. So normally the cross docking is made outside the city in, in, in cross docking platforms in the border uh, of the city. You can move to the next slide, please. So this in terms of emissions, they represent around 16% of all uh, particular material emissions, uh, at least 10% of all GHD. Uh, emissions. They also uh, correspond to around 2,300 um, deaths per year. Um, this in terms of, of transport, not only, not only freight, and that's exactly what we want to, to, to improve. So in terms of emissions, they also impact the whole uh, quality system that we want to have or improve uh, air quality that we deserve or that the citizens deserve. And that's exactly what we want to do. We want to improve this efficiency. So you can see in the last bullet that you have around uh, almost 70% of all the, the transport efficient. Uh, they correspond to also the, the energy or fuel or, or commercial uh, consumption. That's exactly what we want to, to, to change. Okay, go to the next slide. So what we are looking for, we want uh, a solution that provides this usable and compelling information that both freight vehicles uh, owners, small and big, but also formal and informal, uh, may feel uh, like uh, promoted to use it, like a Waze, like a Google Maps. Um, we want to ensure like data security and privacy protection to all users. So if you share your information that you know that no one else will, will use it, um, or if you want to share it that you willingly know that you are doing it. We want to promote and incentivize this participation and integration between different stakeholders because you can be more efficient in terms of circulation or transport, but then if the freight receiver isn't there when, when the truck is, gets there, or if the, uh, the industrial company uh, isn't ready when the trucks gets there to, to load, so you will lose everything that, that you want. So in terms of the, of the country, you have a lot of highways and new infrastructure that saves time and costs time, but then you have the, all the trucks that get to the city and they spend around one to three hours to unload and to, to cross the city. So that's what we want to focus on. Uh, to analyze and present aggregate data. So we have different uh, sources of information in terms of environment, in terms of, of mobility, but none of them is integrated in the, in the same platform and in a usable or knowledge information so that the freight uh, uh, transport owners, but also who, the, the ones that they hired for or hired by, they can also use it so that you can integrate and, and have a whole mitigation of emission and efficient in logistics around the city. Um, you need to identify like which regulation we need to put in place. So like I told you before, you have a few regulations that limitates or, or restrict some of the situations in the city. Um, but in some cities that may be too much, but probably here you need a little bit more of that, but you need to be there. You need to have it like integrated. 
otherwise it would be hard to, to, to comply. Um, and that kind of, of situation has happened as were before. Um, so we want something like intelligent smart routing provided to these transport users, depending on their vehicle uh, uh, fuel, you should have more restrictions or at least different time slots to enter the city so that you can balance the whole circulation like with the token and balance the emissions that we have uh, uh, like around 12 uh, uh, stations within the city that uh, uh, analyze and measure uh, on uh, real time emissions of the city. And at the end, to integrate all this, integrate traffic, freight supply, and transport data in, in, that have different sources. So we know that uh, big companies, they have like contract towers that know where the tr their trucks are, where they want, they are supposed to stop and how the routing should be. But each company like has a different like system. So it's quite hard to integrate it and to, to, to have like a flow uh, of, of freight within the city. Uh, next slide, please. And so uh, at, in, in your side, uh, we are working side by side with different stakeholders. We have the main uh, like freight companies, we have the main freight associations, also big production companies uh, working side by side with environmental and, and mobility security. Um, if you want to come to the city, we have also offices that we can provide. Uh, we can accompany you to different like interviews with different stakeholders. Uh, we can provide you the, the, the information that we already have in terms of environmental and mobility. Um, so we are here to help you so that you don't, don't, don't feel like you are starting this from, from scratch or from zero. We have in place like a, a, a logistics network, like urban logistics network, uh, that is coordinated and led by the Secretariat of Mobility that has almost 200 companies that uh, are, they are part of it and made and implement you know, on a daily basis like best practice in terms of logistics. Um, and we can also connect you to other stakeholders that uh, we are not connected now that you may need. Thank you so much for, for participating today. Uh, be glad to know Follow up questions at the end of the of the pitch. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Ricardo. Um, and as you said, we'll have a question uh, period at the end, uh, but do feel free to submit your questions in the chat. Uh, but now I'm going to speak to a little bit about how to enter and what we're looking for. Um, so just to add on to what Hannah and Ricardo were already saying, we're looking for, but this is not limited to technologists, SME, and startups developers, finance experts, and more. Um, each city challenge is complex and requires um, many different types of solutions and um, that require working together to achieve those ambitions that Ricardo mentioned earlier. Um, so we're looking for a variety of different proposals um, to, that can contribute to solving the problem. Uh, we don't expect a single organization to overcome every barrier. Um, so uh, partnerships are welcome. Uh, finalists are going to work together with city stakeholders to fine tune those proposals, adapt to the city context um, specifically, and form those relationships um, to create a team um, of partnerships for each city. Um, in terms of um, being eligible to participate, um, so we're looking for registered entities, um, which includes businesses, charities, um, communities, um, community groups, educational institutions, sole traders, public bodies uh, from anywhere around the world. Um, we're just asking that um, your application clearly responds to the challenge that's articulated in the brief that is available on our website. Um, so um, ahead of making your application, we really recommend that you read through those briefs um, and that you also read our terms and conditions before submitting your application. Um, and then separate applications must be submitted for each organization. Um, in terms of criteria, um, so all eligible applications will be assessed on the same criteria outlined on the slide. Um, so there are four key elements that we're looking for, which include impact and innovation. Um, so does your solution have the potential to achieve the um, desired impact, um, concept viability, so does um, 
do you pr present a robust concept that is ready to be demonstrated in a real world environment? So looking at technical feasibility, um, is your business model feasible? And also, are you considering your user and customer engagement as well? Um, and also, is um, your solution affordable to the end user as well? Um, thirdly, so the collaboration potential. So uh, collaboration is a huge part of the challenge. So um, as the applicant, are you well suited to join a team and will engage with the team and also with the city? Um, so we're gonna be looking at your willingness to work with new partners um, and are you willing to integrate uh, your solution or the solution of others um, together? Um, and how does, um, as the applicant, are you willing to collaborate with the city? Um, and then lastly, capability. So uh, does, uh, do you have the track and track record to deliver? So based on your experience and expertise, uh, what's your capability to deliver your solution? And lastly, how to apply. So as Hannah mentioned earlier, the um, applications close on the 5th of January, 2022 at 5 p.m. UTC. So you can submit your application via the application portal called Submittable, which is available on our website. Uh, we also have an early application deadline, which is the 5th of December, and that gives you the opportunity to kind of soft pitch your uh, solution directly to the cities, uh, which will take place in um, early December. Um, and then lastly, uh, if you have any questions today, please do submit them um, through the chat while we have the cities here available to answer any questions you have, um, or Hannah and I also are happy to answer questions. Um, we also have an FAQ on our website. Um, the link is on the slides, and then you can also contact us at climatesmart at citieschallenge.org. And um, that concludes the slides, but so we'll open it up for any questions. Um, let's see if we have any in the chat. It seems like we have one from Christian. So uh, are the Euro 400K distributed per city or to all the cities? Uh, Hannah, did you want to take this one? Sure. Um, so that 400k will be kind of shared between the four winning teams. So as I mentioned, one team per city, so one winning pit team per city. So yes, distributed um, between all four. Thanks for your question there, Christian. Please do add any more as well. Either in the chat or in the Q&A function, um, or if something comes to you afterwards, there's the kind of email address as well. And we'll happily field your questions to the team from Bogota as well, if, you, if, we, if necessary. So maybe let's just give people a couple of minutes. Um, yeah, I just, is there anything further, Ricardo or Francisco, that you wanted to add? Um, yeah, I thought you guys did a fantastic job outlining the opportunity. It's a really exciting challenge. Um, so hopefully everyone on the call today has got a good sense of, of what you guys want. Um, and are looking for. Yeah, if you look it up in the challenge brief, you have more detailed information and more explained one. Um, so probably that would be like the, the, the first tip uh, to enter this challenge. But what we are looking for, like broadly, for like an example, you are not restricted to, to, to comply with this type of solutions. Just what I have, what we have in, in our heads. It's like like a, a, a waste system for freight that has uh, that uh, drinks or that gets information from different sources of, of mobility and environmental uh, information in terms of emissions and also in terms of cars, public uh, buses, and but also freight that also works side by side with freight receivers, freight like senders. Uh, and with car couriers okay, that, that get the, the, the cargo from one place to another um, so that you can uh, in some way like balance this with real time uh, or future uh, levels of city emissions uh, in the city. So that we know that the worst time to, 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 to get to the city in terms of emissions of that most pollutes is in the, in the morning. Uh, because everyone wants to get to, to, to their jobs or to their universities 
Um, so that's when we have like most challenge uh, to, to organize our infrastructure, but also our uh, levels of city emissions and air quality that impact uh, mostly uh, at the south side of the city in which you have like big industrial companies, big factories. And so you submit with transport and also with uh, uh, non-paved roads and you have like the worst air quality ever. That's what we want to improve. Uh, that's what we are looking for in, in some, somewhat, but uh, any doubts that you have, we are free and, and, and happily to, to answer it. I don't know if Francisco, if you want to complement something. Thanks, Ricardo. I think you already said everything about the information that is in the web page of the of the channel. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, and definitely would encourage everyone to read the brief. Uh, I think the link is in the chat, as Ricardo says, and it's really detailed and has lots of great information in there. Um, maybe just a couple more minutes, um, please do. I can see some posts in the chat. I think we've answered most of the questions now. Um, but there's also the Q&A function, um, or you can even raise your hand if you would like to speak, um, and we can unmute you. Clearly, we've done a very good job of explaining the challenge and what it's all about. There's not, not, not too many questions, which is sometimes a very good sign. Um, so yeah, appreciate appreciate everyone's time today. Um, Lauren, any kind of final any final recommendations, or do you think we are ready to wrap up? Uh, no, nothing from me. Uh, thank you all very much for participating. But I uh, just want to give Livia a last chance to um, say a few words. Livia, did you want to add anything before we wrap up? Um, I think uh, Livia might have dropped into another call. So this is uh, <laughs> Isabel speaking uh, from the UN Habitat team. But no, just just to reiterate the same things that uh, that the colleagues have already mentioned. We are looking forward to the to the uh, innovations that will be submitted by any of you that is that are attending today. Um, this will definitely be a team effort, and as you heard earlier, there's uh, a chance then for your innovation to be matched with different uh, um, team members who might have submitted uh, um, ideas to the challenge as well. So that is uh, coming up in the next step of the process. For now, we're just looking forward to receiving uh, the information that you might provide and the ideas and uh, solutions that you have. And, um, and in the meantime, please do familiarize yourself uh, with all of the documentation that has been uh, prepared uh, by the city. It is uh, great. And then also I did post um, just, just a moment ago also the LinkedIn and Twitter handles for the Climate Smart Cities Challenge, where we will be uh, continuing to post throughout this application period also um, updates uh, on the challenge, on the process, uh, on the application deadlines, etc. So feel free to also follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. And, um, and then you see the email address uh, on the screen. So in, in case of any follow-up questions, please do not hesitate to actually reach out to the, to the team from, from uh, the Climate Smart Cities Challenge as well. So thanks a lot for that. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, thanks everyone for joining the webinar and uh, please do just email us if you have any additional questions. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you very much.